But tonight we have the, um, well, I should say the 2005 winner of the International Blues Challenge. Long time ago, yeah. yeah. Last year, wasn't it? Jimmy is a young 20 year old. <laughs> was the International Blues Challenge winner in Memphis in 2005. But give him some love, give him a big hand. Thanks, John, and thanks, everybody. It's hard to believe that was 2005. Who remembers that, that period of the Blues uh, Society and me winning over there? Who was around for that? Surely a few of us here tonight, surely. Brothers and sisters, thank you. Well, it was a great experience, and uh, I, wish, uh, I wish that experience upon everybody into the challenge. consideration I haven't got a destination only got a railway station waiting all my dreams are stacked up to the ceiling and no one here seems to know how I'm feeling I'm gonna play the blues but it's hard to see I've never been to Memphis or a New Orleans well I've seen a lot of souls sitting at the mental bowl thinking I got a big mouth. I opened it in Caulfield South, drinking. The government said I don't have a proper job. Well, how come I've been working like a dog? I wanna make the blues, but it's hard to see it out. I've never been to Memphis or the New Orleans. And all that walking, did you bring a glossy photo, baby? The girl they showed the casino I knew the people wanna be so crazy All people say I'm too young to a them, But I got me a little blues of my own I wanna pick a blues, but it's hard
all I'm petty can't throw a New York or Delaware well, I don't care, you know I'll ever been there Deep South sounds wild, stick to the old house You all in the water, see the music that the blow which is uh, dedicated to parents the world over. Uh, I don't know if you know this, some of you do, because I bang on about it constantly. But uh, next year I will turn 60. 60! <laughs> Thank you. 60. And even at my ripe old age of nearly 60! What the hell happened? <laughs> even at my ripe old age of 60. Just to add, uh, to augment my life, if you will, I decided to have kids at 49. So I have two children under 10. <laughs> Round of applause. Yeah. If some of you are already thinking, some of you have got kids already, will be thinking, that means that Jimmy Hawking will never sleep in again. Because that's it. No. Ever. And that's true. I won't change it, but I will say that now I, I daydream about sleeping in. That's actually one of my sort of fantasies. So, 
I was thinking about going to some professional women one time and uh, say, what do you want to do? I was just like, I just want to go to sleep for an hour. That was a bit off colour, wasn't it? Oh well. <laughs> well, I'm only human. But I have this song which is uh, a holdover from when my oldest now, he's nearly eight, and uh, like the, I, I saw Joe and Sonny over there, they're nearly eight year old. And um, young Max uh, wouldn't sleep for the first nearly two years without being held. He couldn't, he couldn't lie, he wouldn't relax without being held. So for about, for about the first two years, I held him uh, all the time, in the daytime, and during the night to make him sleep because his startle reflex was so uh, extraordinary as soon as he fell asleep he would wake straight back up again so I had to just keep rocking back to sleep so what I did was uh, many times I would have him in the night I'd be like rocking him to sleep and I would have my harmonica in his hand kind of like coming up with a few tunes which you've never heard because they're terrible but I, I came up with them anyway and there's this one song which I came up with kind of half on the ukulele and uh, I'm going to play it for you now so I dedicate to you if you're like me I want you to think of me more like the Mick Jagger of the blues now. I just keep having kids, I don't even care. Better watch out when I go home so I don't have another one, I don't even know. That's what Mick would do. I've seen the writing on the wall. I've got no interest at all. All I want is to stay. To stay in bed, I'm gonna let me be. Let me be, I don't wanna face the world. Leave me here, leave me here. Dreaming about pretty girls. There's no safer place to be. Get all gone to pieces without me. All I want is to stay in bed. Should act my age back when just not on the same page. All I want is to stay in bed. Yeah, all I want is to stay. Play a song with a capo. Watch out now. <laughs> Shit's getting real. Hey, whoa, whoa. Guitars hate capos. I don't know if you know this. I guess this isn't strictly a blues song, so lock the door! Just in case people get narky at me. I have a career in uh, uh, multiple styles. I guess it's fair to say these days. I, of course, I know I play in a rock band. You've heard of the Screaming Jets, right? Screaming Jets, you've heard of us? Yeah. Well, just middle-aged rockers who are cranky and weird when it comes to hotel rooms and M&Ms. And I also had a bit of a career in sort of like a, I guess you would call it a folk kind of environment. Uh, so I kind of, uh, when I started playing a solo acoustic gigs in about 84, 85, and probably most of you weren't even born, um, in those days, it was it was fair to say that if you were playing an acoustic gig, everybody called you a folky. I don't know why it was. It, it, I mean, Marvin Lorne was playing blues, Fiona was playing blues, but everybody referred to us as folk musicians because we had an acoustic guitar. It was a very strange time. Unless you were the Dutchman, everyone thought you were a folky. So, anyway. So I have songs in multiple genres. We're going to do this one, we're going to do a death metal song after this. So. This song because it became an award-winning song back in uh, uh, back in uh, uh, 19 something in the day, and it was used in a movie called uh, uh, Seven Moments of Infidelity. I think it was called. That a friend of mine produced, and she used some of my songs as uh, part of the uh, soundtrack. 
and went on to become one of the first Australian films to win an award in the Cannes uh, Film Festival. So uh, look at this huge royalty check of like $72. We're straight down the guitar shop with four sets of strings. Friendship, so you've been away quite some time, and I see you're coming back now. Bags look heavy, and feet look so Like a woman brace of an autumn sun
and right across my face. Actually, uh, I'm going to play some harmonica. Um, some of you might not realise I, I started playing the harmonica when I was quite young, and uh, I was actually a pretty good harmonica part player at about the age of ten. So, um, but unfortunately, that was my peak. It's been all downhill since then. My grandfather showed me a few tunes. He was an old, uh, an old seaman who he worked uh, the ships in uh, in England. He was uh, my, my mother's side of the family come from Ramsgate in uh, in England. And they worked the ships in the docks and my, my granddad, who I'm named after, and who I wear the hat because he wore the hat, see. Um, he played the harmonica and gave me my first chromatic harmonica. And uh, many of my old songs went more like this. <coughs> Like, it's great and all, but I haven't had much call for it at the gigs, really. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so I decided I would start to play harmonica a little bit more, which I have been doing. And um, uh, so in lockdown, I experimented more with harmonica. And uh, so I'm uh, trying to get back to where I was when I was 10. That's what I'm trying to do, right? So, uh, so I've adapted one of my old songs uh, uh, for harmonica. Let's see if we can have a go right now. <laughs> I actually found a big plexure in the back of my harmonica a little while ago, the kids had put in there. I thought I was just playing terribly and I was like, wait a minute, there's something in here. It's all good. And want to call down. Well, I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what to say. Thought the man could live all the man could be dead. Whoa, I'm going out of my head. I'm going out of my head. Going out of my head. The songs, but there are other keys, and I've only owned, I only own one harmonica so far. That's not really true. 
excuse. But I guess uh, I, uh, I did come up with an album which took me a long time to record, which I still call my latest album because I, it came out probably in the last year or two. But uh, I haven't really done much to promote it. Uh, I've been busy with the Jets and stuff. But uh, it's only taken me seven or eight years to make this record. So if you do buy a copy and you don't like it, please don't tell me because uh, if I can't come up with a reasonable hour album in seven years, I'm in real trouble. This could be the last one. The next one will be called Jimmy Hocking Sings the Shows. And I'll be doing all Johnny Farnham style songs from... <laughs> I did uh, feel that the album was a little heavy. This is a true thing. Uh, when I when I finished it, so I actually uh, 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 ditched half the record and uh, rewrote and reworked a few other songs. They're a little bit more light-hearted. But uh, uh, because I'm a Gemini and I live in this kind of bipolar world of an extreme happy, extreme sad, um, the songs that I, I made to be happy were a little bit sillier than I'd hoped. So I've got these really heavy, morose songs about life and death, and then these other songs that are completely, ridiculously silly. Anyway, this is my world. Just be thankful you're not sharing a house with me. This is one of the sillier songs. And uh, as soon as I released the album, uh, uh, very softly, I immediately had an email from a woman. Immediately! Who was offended. Offended! We live in this world now, people. But I realised as I read her email uh, that uh, she hadn't listened to the song, she'd only read the title. So I felt like it wasn't fair, because there's much more in the song than just the title. It's a provocative title. Oh yes, provocative. Not dissimilar to uh, Madonna's book called Sex. <laughs> My song is called, I Hate the Ukulele. Provocative. <laughs> it's a satirical thing, satire! I told the lady, uh, I gave her that she, I sent her the, 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 um, the de dictionary's description of satire. Yep. Smart, she's never been to a gig ever since, but anyway. Whatever. Stop the playing when I am around. I, I think of Tiny Tim. Then I start to cringe. I need a cup of tea and a little lie down. I've never been one of the cool kids. I never want a fashion award. Nice oh, hat, mate. And even though hate is a very strong word, I really, really, really feel negative towards. A blonde girl, she had a little nose ring and a ukulele. But she went out with a hipster, and he had a luscious beard and worked as a barista in a cool cafe. I tried to impress her with my je ne sais quoi, but didn't see her noticing me. Strutting around with my electric guitar. She has a thing for the jumping flea. That's the ukulele.
Don't take it too seriously. I actually love this little fact that uh, I love George Harrison. He's one of the reasons I actually started playing the guitar in the first place. And um, George apparently would travel with two ukuleles wherever he went, so that if somebody uh, wanted to sit down and have a play with him, he always had a spare ukulele so they could uh, play together. Who knew this fact? Anyone? Just me. Us do. Us are George Harrison fans. So anyway. So I feel like it's a bit of Australian blues, really. And uh, in the band I play, in the Screaming Jets, we recorded this song a couple of years ago as part of an album of uh, uh, radio's most played Australian songs. We did new versions of the songs, and it's a Paul Kelly song. And in my career, I've had the good fortune of playing with a lot of people, and uh, I played behind Paul Kelly one night at the uh, Forum Theatre. And uh, it was a great pleasure, I can assure you. I love his songs, I love what he does. And uh, as we were standing side of stage, I said to Paul, I said, man, so it's really awesome to be playing with you. I, I, I feel very privileged and uh, I'm really looking forward to the show. And he said, yeah, right. <laughs> so I feel like I, I share a special bond with the man now. <laughs> I don't even care, I don't even care. I'll just stop playing and leave in tears. I love this song 
actually, uh, and uh, I wrote the song while I was travelling the States uh, after winning the, uh, the award I won, very fortunately. I decided to spend a bit more time in Memphis. I stayed after the festival and hung around for a while and I started writing some songs. And I wanted to have a very gospel-y kind of uh, song if it was possible for me to write. This is what I came up with. Actually, I didn't quite finish the song, but I got back to home where I was living at the time, down the morning to Peninsula. I did the last verse in Rosebud. So I'd started in Memphis and then ended up in the beautiful uh, Rosebud area. <laughs> Romantic. Romantic story, right? <laughs> Cause five years feels like forever Same. I never saw the answer Just the question once again Don't you know that I was only Trying to understand the way I couldn't see the sunshine I'm so many miles away I stare into a picture How I wish I knew the way I'm wasting time in Georgia I got what you still away This is something I do know. For the people here who want to make it in the blues, to be a great blues man or woman, you really need to have one thing. And that is a totally crap love life. Because I can assure you, no one wants to hear your happy ass blues songs. They want to hear suffer. As John Lee Hooker said, should be right to suffer, should be right to be alone. And this song takes place in St Kilda in 1984, home of the blues. When I had a beautiful girlfriend at the time and a wonderful mum, which of course you know is back again now. And uh, in the days before bullying, if you had a beautiful girlfriend, the local workman would let you know some stuff. 
For example, we'd walk along hand in hand in Grey Street, St Kilda, and the workman would yell, Hey mate! They'd say, Hey! They'd quip, Hey mate! They'd advise, advise. Hey mate! You're punching above your weight, mate! <laughs> Because of that pressure and uh, the mullet going out of style a short time later, we broke up. It's a blue song. <laughs> so anyway. God, it's so cool loving you. You lonely break my heart. You treated me like a dog. I'll never be that fool again Never be that fool again Yeah, but I won't, I'll have you one more time So tell me when, tell me when Seeing the sun come up, seeing the sun go down You never told me why Treat me like a friend Never treat me like a friend Yeah, but I won't I'll have you one more time So tell me when Tell me when I'm 
my bike, they never turn out right, I always blow it. And the day we had to part, I had a broken heart, but I couldn't let on. So I spent my holiday just thinking about the way I must have gone wrong, yeah. Sometimes I think about it, yeah, it happens every day. See a man, we have a real good time. When I heard the black man's blues, it was blue in my mind. So with some friends who made a stand, we formed our first blue band. It was a real good thing. Sometimes I think about it. It happens every day. But I should. But I remember when I was young, I remember when I was young, I surely do. here at the NBAS tonight. My name is Jimmy Hawking. I'm playing the guitar and sing. I have no other skills than kids stay in school. In the meantime, we'll hang around a little bit, play a little bit of a jam and uh, enjoy yourselves tonight. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for your support. I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Just remember, Blues Challenge winner, 2005. Would you like to hear one more? Yeah. I thought it was overtime, you'd be like, no, get him out of here. <laughs> Musicians think they know everything, I'm no exception. And I know this. If you want to meet old men, <laughs> and who doesn't? Get yourself a valiant. <laughs> I've owned five valiants in my life. I bought the first one when they were $1,200 cars. Not so much nowadays. The last one I had uh, was a beautiful AP5, and I had an AP6 as well. I had a safari wagon, I had a VE square back. That's a beautiful car. I had an XM4 or two along the way. Anyway, I'm like a middle aged dad now with a Subaru. It's a real shame. <laughs> uh, anyway, when I had the last valley, especially the AP6, anywhere I would pull up a petrol in this great nation of ours, there'd always be some old guy looking at my car. Let's call him Harry, shall we? Harry High Pants. <laughs> and when you walk in to pay for your petrol, Harry will always want to talk to you about your car. Harry will say something like, Yeah, nice car, mate. I like your car, mate. Very tight, very straight looking car. Got there, very tall. Got that car, mate. I like your car, mate. Beautiful car with a boom around the back, mate. I like your car, mate. Beautiful car, mate. I love your car, mate. <laughs> and I'd always say, 
Thanks. <laughs> then Harry will tell you something like, you have one of them cars yourself, mate. They came in 63 that morning. My wife bought me a 67 for going shepherd, mate. Shepherd, mate, 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 shepherd, mate, shepherd, mate. Miles away from the ocean. Beautiful car, mate. Miles away from the bloody ocean. Shepherd, miles away from the ocean. There's no rush in that bloody car, mate. That car cost me $27. That's why I always had a little anxiety attack. <laughs> Even though they're worth a lot more now, uh, the last van that I had, I paid about $7,000 for it. And uh, I paid $3,000 to get it fixed. I paid about $2,500 for a club plate uh, so I could drive for eight and a half minutes on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and they still have shit radios. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much they cost. Which brings me to my song. I don't want to go back to my job I'll sit at home and go pat my dog Take my girl on a honeymoon Eat my soup from a silver spoon Hey, hey, that's what I say I get a brand new radio for my car Lay on the home, gonna count every single star She said I'm the only one I said I'd better be here That's what I see Give me a brand new radio for my car Lay on the hook, gonna count every single song Oh yeah, man Well, I don't wanna ever be lonely Don't wanna ever be brain Just wanna feel the sunshine and the rain Yeah. 